but there's a lot of I suppose a lot of research from from Ireland even from you, you guys in New Zealand that would support the the productivity of plantain and, and the, the the nutritive value of it and in, in animal performance studies and um, there's also something potentially more exciting coming down the line in terms of the the environmental benefits of plantain and, and you've done a lot of work on, on that yourself over the last 10 years could you explain a little bit about about that to us yeah in in it with all these um good bits of science they come from um sometimes an observation over a number of years um, and, and suddenly the parts of the jigsaw sort of come together in the early 2000s we were doing some work looking at uh, the use of plantain to drive sheep lactation systems and that's where we're using pure sward so only uh, plantain uh, being fed to sheep early in lactation and one of the things we noticed um, and we didn't actually um, we didn't actually uh, use this as a piece of the puzzle till quite later but we didn't see any urine patches in those swords and yet in the grass swords that um, that we're also using um, urine patches in that early spring were very evident and it wasn't until we started thinking about that observation and looking at the way that protein was being processed uh, um, in the animal with this feed that we suddenly realised that this was having a profound effect on um, not only the amount of nitrogen in urine but the way that um, the form that it was being deposited in. And of course, um, as we uh, move through into the, um, you know, to closer to present day, uh, those observations became very important when we were trying to reduce nitrate leaching from the urine patch. Um, and so um, it wasn't until uh, there was there was a reason for us to think about that that we actually discovered that. So it was a um, it was an interesting observation, and we still see that today. We are we are grazing swords that have had um, a high proportion of of um, ecotain in them that we, we see um, very few urine patches. We do see patches where we've had faecal fouling and that looks like a urine patch, but if you go scratching, you'll find that there's a, a, there's a faecal pad in there and that's why there's been some rejection there. But um, though that observation um, continues to be something that we see um, quite a lot of and it, and it represents the fact that um, uh, the urine patch from animals grazing, uh, ecotain particularly, um, uh, behave in quite a different way. Yeah, we see that even in, in fields like what we have here in the herbal lays, um, you get that from farmers as well, that there's not as many hot spots. Uh, there's a lot more even um, graze out uh, with, the, with the herbal lays and that's obviously because there's, there's such a content of, of plantain there. Uh, there's a couple of other mechanisms as well and I think these are nearly the more, the more exciting ones or they're, they're really interesting or impressive in terms of plantain and how it interacts with the soil and, and behaves with, uh, with, the, with the nitrogen process as well. So could you, could you enlighten us on some of those? Yeah, so just to go back and, 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 um, and summarise what's happening in the animal, essentially um, the urine patches are, um, are more dilute. And we know that um, in, uh, in a lot of farming systems, it's the urine patch where we're getting the most leakage of nitrogen out of that. So they are really the, the, the hot spots of, um, of uh, nitrate leakage. And so um, in the, for, for the, 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 the first thing that, we, that um, Ecotain does is it reduces the concentration of nitrogen. Does that in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, we've talked about the fact that it increases metabolizable protein, and essentially what that does is means that less of the dietary nitrogen um, that they're consuming ends up in urine. So for a ryegrass, um, perhaps half of the nitrogen they eat is cleared as urine. Um, in plantain pastures, that may be a third or a little bit more. So there's less nitrogen getting into urine. And then through the, um, the presence of a diuretic in the plant, and the fact that it is a lot wetter as a plant, we see an increase in urine volume. So we're adding more water to that. So as well as having less nitrogen, we've also got a high urine volume and therefore the concentration of that is, um, is very much lower and, and sometimes less than half, which has a profound effect on the amount that's going to leach out of that. Um, not only have we got a high urine volume, but you can imagine that it's being spread um, over more of the paddock because we're actually urinating more often. So there's, 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 kind of, um, uh, there's quite a benefit there. Um, but you're right, I think the really exciting stuff is what happens when that urine patch is created on the ground. And the, and the first thing that um, we've been able to demonstrate is that there's a um, compound that comes through the urine of animals that are grazing ecotain um, that acts as a biological nitrification inhibitor. So just to explain that, typically what we have is in the urine patch we have a very quick conversion of um, ammonium um, uh, into nitrate and that's, that happens with our soil um, ammonium oxidising bacteria and it happens relatively quickly over the period of um, a few weeks. Um, in the urine patches uh, that are made from animals grazing uh, ecotain, 
um, the conversion of ammonium through to nitrate is so much slower. And remember, the ammonium is a non-leachable form. Um, it doesn't matter how much water is moving through the profile, um, that's not going to go anywhere. Whereas the nitrate um, uh, is, a, is in a very leachable form. So the speed at which we convert ammonium through to nitrate um, is, quite sig is quite significant. And if we can slow that down, we slow the potential for leaching down. We eventually get it, but it's over a much longer time period. And so some of the measurements we've made have suggested that um, for 30 days for a whole grazing round, um, we've got far more um, nitrogen in that urine patch being held in a form that's non-leachable. So that's really exciting. So the other um, mechanism that's um, at play here is um, when that urine patch um, hits, the, hits the soil, if that soil has actually um, grown ecotain in it, so the, there are plants present, we're getting um, an additional um, benefit of some of that nitrogen, particularly in the autumn, being immobilised. Um, so that means that it's not plant available, but it's also not leachable. Um, and that can be quite, um, that can be very useful, particularly over wet winters, for example. And that nitrogen um, will be re-released in the spring as temperatures warm up, and and um, we get a, a mobilisation of nitrogen. So that's a, another really important point. Now we don't exactly know how that's happening at the moment. Um, there's some more uh, research going on, but it's actually quite a powerful trait because in a lot of the lysimeter work that we've been doing, and lysimeters are essentially a column of soil that we've sort of dug into a tube, and we can tip some stuff on the top and measure what comes out the bottom. In those lysimeters, um, we've been able to demonstrate that by just using normal animal urine, we do get this quite substantial reduction in nitrate leaching, you know, in the order of um, probably 30 to 50 percent. So, so the reductions in nitrate leaching when you put all, the, all of those four mechanisms, mechanisms together, that's the reduced nitrogen in the urine, um, the, the nitrification inhibitor in the urine patch and uh, what's happening in terms of the soil. We put all those four together. Some of our systems research has demonstrated that at paddock scale you're likely to see somewhere between a 20 and 50 percent, 60 percent reduction in terms of nitro leaching. It depends on um, nitrogen use depends on uh, your soil properties, it probably depends on the environment, how much rain's going through there. But in the order of, you could say halving nitrate um, leaching is, is possible with the, the use of this technology. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I think you mentioned some of the, the, the terms and conditions of, of the effect of this and I think it, it matches up nicely with the, with the danger zones in terms of nitrate leaching and we hear from the EPA that in certain areas where it's free draining soil where there's high nitrogen loads in the spring and the autumn when we have a lot of rain going through the system, um, these are the hot spots and, and that's exactly where, where Ecotain works, works best and that's where you're going to get the, the most value from it in terms of your nitrate reduction. Yeah, and I think the other thing, if, um, this is, a, this is a, um, a biological tool and I think um, you know, when we're dealing with nature, um, you know, we do get variation in terms of how it performs in different environments. But I think the, I think that's, um, the, the benefit here is that we're dealing with a plant that's doing this. So we're actually getting um, nature to solve a problem of nature. Um, and I think that's, that's really useful. We're not spraying um, any um, chemicals or anything on this. This is actually doing this in a, a very natural way. And you might ask, what, so why, um, why, do, why do plantains, and particularly ecotain, why does ecotain want to do this? And if you can imagine that, um, that the, the plantain as a, as a weed species, um, it um, was very good at colonising areas that were of low fertility, um, probably didn't have a lot of um, organic matter in soil. So they um, got very good at being able to hold nitrogen and not let it go. And I think this is the reason why we've got this plant doing it, is, is that um, it's come from an environment which is a low nitrogen environment, um, and it's, it's, um, it's developed these techniques in terms of being able to hold on to what little nitrogen is here. And we're just harness, harnessing, um, harnessing those, um, those properties. I think the other important thing to point out is that um, not all plantains are the same when it comes to um, this technology. Um, we've been doing a lot of work to try and get those genotypes that um, express the secondary plant compounds that are important, um, those that are able to um, actually be winter active and upright, so they work from an a, a, um, agronomic point of view uh, as well. Um, and we're starting to understand some of those soil properties and what are the characteristics of our breeding lines that we need to uh, breed for in terms of trying to improve it. So I don't think we've, um, we haven't exhausted the um, 
the uh, magnitude of, of the ability to reduce nitrate leaching. I think we've um, we've got a very good variety in Ecotain at the moment, um, but I think there is um, potentially some um, some uh, new varieties coming through that may all equally um, uh, be um, very good at doing this. Yeah, yeah, that's an important point. I think we're only at the start of this whole breeding program, and this is one trait. And I think there's a perception in, in Ireland and uh, in, in, in the infancy of the of the concept of multi-species and using herbs in pasture that plantain is plantain and chicory is chicory, but there are there are key differences between varieties and, and classifications the same way there is with perennial ryegrass and heading date and things like that, especially I think the winter dormancy versus versus uh, winter activity. And I, th I think that, um, and, and this is where it's really important to make sure that we are sourcing the right information because if we are using winter dormant varieties, for example, um, they are far less effective at a time when we need them to be active from a leaching point of view. So I think th those things, those details are very important. Um, there are some breeding lines and, and actually commercial cultivars that we've evaluated through the different uh, mechanisms that are far less effective and so we um, uh, so it's important to note that as we as we breed new varieties we're going to have to be very careful about testing that they also meet the minimum standards for um, the, the traits that we um, that we now recognize as, as re being important in reducing nitrate leaching. And obviously something that doesn't grow for as many months of the year is going to be lower yielding from a purely agronomic value, uh, point of view, so you're going to lose the benefits in terms Absolutely. of production. Absolutely. And, and, and I think, um, you know, uh, where we're trying to get, you know, some of these require animals to be consuming, you know, reasonable amounts um, every day. If we've got um, those varieties that are flatter or less productive, then that's going to be harder. So I think you're right. Um, not only is it is it about dry matter production and, and having animals, but it's also about, you know, if we're if they're only getting three or four percent in their diet, then the 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 effect is very much diluted. Um, if we've, if we've got um, strong varieties that are upright, easily grazed, then um, uh, and and uh, active um, on the shoulders, then we're going to there's a greater chance of getting more into the animal. So it's an it's an important point and one that um, shouldn't be lost when we're looking at. Um, uh, you know, using this technology. So we're really excited to have access to uh, Ecotain this year uh, at DLF and it's going to be included in all of our herbal lays and if you want to try something a little bit different it can be added to some of our grazing mixtures like 4 rain Grazer or DLF Grazer. Um, if you'd like any more information on Ecotain there's lots of information on our website um, or you can contact any of the team for details.